One of the major arguments against ID is that it does not make any empirically testable predictions and hence is not science. Rather, it is claimed, various hypotheses to explain the apparent design of the cosmos and life are merely metaphysical. And so this is one of the, um, among scientists, claim is that the distinguishment feature um, between science and metaphysics or philosophy is the ability to make testable predictions. I don't necessarily agree with that, but I think if you could show that ID made testable predictions, that would go a long ways in um, establishing it in science. So in this talk, I will present two examples showing how robust testable predictions can be drawn from fine-tuning related hypotheses, design, multiple universe, and assumptions underlying the fine-tuning argument. This shows we must be very careful in too quickly making the separation between what counts as a scientific hypothesis and what merely counts as a metaphysical hypothesis. So to begin this whole thing, let me briefly review the fine-tuning argument just to get your bearings. Here's the argument in its briefest form, as I could give it to you. This is from, the first overhead is from a student many years ago when I started exploring it in class, and she put that on her exam. And the fine-tuning argument, you can think of each constant of physics, let's say the um, strength of gravity. There's a number that determines the strength of gravity that's plugged into the physical laws or the strength of the strong nuclear force that holds protons and neutrons together in a nucleus, or the cosmological constant that determines the expansion rate of empty space. Each of those could be thought of as dials in one analogy here, and unless they're perfectly, if they're perfectly set, life can exist. If they're not perfectly set, just within one part in a 10,000 billion, 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 for example, then life cannot exist. So then the argument is there's two ways of explaining this. One is everything is set perfectly right for life. That seems in many people's mind to indicate there must be a designer behind everything. After all, that would be way too unlikely under the chance hypothesis. Then there's another hypothesis that many people put forward. And that's what I call the mini-universe scenario. And there exists some physical process that generates a very large, if not infinite, number of universes. Every time a universe is generated, the parameters of physics are set at random. Because of the large number of universes generated, eventually one will turn up with just the right values of the parameters of physics for life to occur. And this is a cartoon image. No one actually thinks there's a little machine out there. But this is my cartoon image of what's going on. So that's the conveyor belt generating universes. This is taken very seriously among certain segments of the physics community, as I found out um, in a talk I delivered at Stanford last year at a symposium. Um, so certain segments, I say. And then the most common scenario for that is, that's offered today is based in inflationary cosmology. And it's that the universes are generated out of this pre-space, which is like an ocean full of ivory detergent, full of ivory detergent, and bubbles form out. So the universes are little bubble universes. And then I argue against that, even if there is such a universe generator, it only kicks the problem of design up one level, because if you actually look at the physical details, the universe generator has to be put together just right for life to occur. So that's the basic fine-tuning argument. And what we saw is one response is design, one response is many universes. Another key response is going to be important for what I discussed today. It's what's called the, I call the atheistic single universe hypothesis. That simply says that's the way it is and claims the fine tuning argument that it needs an the universe needs an explanation is misguided in some way. Either you can't really speak of probability, Im probability and improbability in this context, or there's no way of inferring from either design or many universes. So those are the three basic responses to this evidence from fine-tuning. 
Now, another analogy, which is going to be important for what we're going to do in drawing um, testable consequences, I'm going to give you another analogy here, and that's an, um, what I call the dartboard analogy. So this I want you to really fix in your mind, and here I've given you my website for if you want further information on the fine-tuning argument. I have um, various articles up there. I've written quite a few articles, as the um, program says, on this topic. So here's the dartboard analogy. You think of the range as possible values for these constants, let's say the strength of gravity, as this dartboard. And then there's a bullseye on the dartboard. And the bullseye is the range discovered by physics of the life-permitting values. And then in that analogy, you see the dartboard having hit the bullseye. And having hit the bullseye, you say, well, if the bullseye is really, really teeny, somebody must have aimed it. And so that's another analogy that um, works to give you design. Now, so keep that in your mind. And now we're going to switch to a thought experiment. So that was just background. Here's our dartboard thought experiment. And so we're going to see the relevance. Just go, move into the thought experiments. Don't worry about the relevance right now, because you'll see the relevance in a minute. So here's the dartboard thought experiment. Consider the following thought experiment. Suppose there is a 10-foot-long dartboard with a bullseye on it. Further suppose that you have bad eyesight and can only, thus only see the right half of the bullseye. Finally, suppose you see a dart hit within the bullseye, so you know you're on the right-hand side, the dart hits within the bullseye as this diagram has it here, it's within the bullseye. That's within a few hundredths of an inch of the lower edge of the bullseye, but the upper edge is unknown. This seems very surprising to you. 